Chapter 3, Knowledge is Wealth. The greatest discovery you can make is to be made aware that there is an infinite power and wisdom resident within you, enabling you to overcome all problems, to rise above all hurdles, and to handle life's tasks. You were born to conquer, and you are equipped with all the necessary attributes, qualities, and potentials to make you a master of your fate and a captain of your soul. If you do not know of your spiritual powers, you will be governed and controlled by events and conditions of the world. You will tend to disparage yourself and generally to hold a low estimate of yourself. In other words, due to your lack of knowledge, you will exalt the power of circumstances and fail to realize the tremendous powers within you, which could lift you up and set you on the high road to happiness, health, freedom, and the joy of living. How Her Knowledge Paid Dividends During a visit to the famous Temple of Delphi near Athens, Greece, in August 1965, I chatted with the guide. She was fluent in English, French, and German, and her knowledge of these languages had interested one of the tourists in our group, who offered her a position as a traveling companion in France and Germany, and also as governess of her three children in New York City. The salary was to be $400 a month, including living quarters and food to be provided in the home. This guide told me that her present salary was about 100 drachmas a day, a little over $3. She said this opportunity was all like a big dream since she had wanted to go to the United States for many years and now her wish was to be fulfilled. The interesting thing about this young lady was that she had been accustomed to praying fervently to the Blessed Virgin every day for more money and for a trip to America. Undoubtedly, her blind faith or belief had succeeded in impregnating her subconscious mind and definitely brought about this extraordinary response, Paracelsus said. Whether the object of your faith be true or false, you will get the same results. His vision was wealth. I went on a lecture tour to England, Germany, Ireland, and Greece, which included several days' vacation in each of the countries visited. In Cork, Ireland, I had dinner in the home of a young wine salesman and his charming wife. He was about 24 years old. He told me that he had had a vision of being the foremost wine salesman in the firm for which he worked, and that it recently had come to pass. He had been invited to the headquarters in Dublin, and at a formal ceremony he had been presented with an inscribed gold watch and a very large increase in salary. He had been first in sales for three consecutive years. Every night this young man had affirmed prior to sleep, I am the foremost salesman, and I am handsomely compensated. He would then mentally picture his wife congratulating him and go off to the deep of sleep. He is an avid reader of my book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, which has transformed his life. This young man, who is a relative of mine, had no idea of competing with anyone. He has succeeded in impregnating his subconscious mind with the idea of the foremost salesman, and his deeper mind, which is always responsive, had reacted in its own unique and extraordinary ways. Its infinite ways are past finding out. Knowledge opens doors. During my visit to the Temple of Apollo in Greece, I noticed a young Greek girl with a book under her arm. I thought that it looked familiar, and on closer observation, I discovered to my astonishment that it was the miracle of mind dynamics. Immediately, I introduced myself, and she bombarded me with all kinds of interesting questions. Her main problem was that she wanted to go to the United States but she had been told at the U.S. Embassy in Athens that it would be years before she could expect to immigrate, due to the large waiting list. She said to me, I have been using the techniques you have outlined in the book, and I have received answers to all my prayers, but this particular one permission to immigrate to the United States. She had been affirming systematically, regularly, and faithfully, Infinite intelligence opens up the way for me to immigrate to the United States in divine order. When man says there is no way, God says that there is, and I accept that way now. I wrote a personal note for her to an extraordinarily brilliant woman attorney in New York, a student of science of mind and an old friend of mine, 
explaining that this Greek girl had a sister in business in New York for many years who was ill and needed her sister in Greece to take care of the business and to help her. The attorney acted almost immediately and wrote this young student of The Miracle of Mind Dynamics in Greece and told her what legal steps to take to ensure her entry into the United States. As I wrote this very chapter, I received a communication from the young lady in Athens, who wrote, It was no accident meeting you. When I saw you dressed in clericals and heard you speak, I knew you were a minister from America. I also knew that you would speak to me, and that somehow you had the answer for me. I was simply the channel through which the infinite wisdom of her subconscious had responded in answer to her constant and persistent desire. She never faltered, vacillated, or questioned the possibility of a way out of her dilemma. She simply knew that there was an answer, and her persistence, stick to itiveness, and determination paid dividends. The first step in the answer to her prayer happened when an airline hostess presented her with a copy of The Miracle of Mind Dynamics, saying, this will help improve your English in a remarkable way, and if you use it, you will find yourself in America. The ways of the subconscious at times are entrancing, fascinating, enthralling, and captivating. You begin to realize that wonders never cease, and that he never faileth. Her new concept gained a contract. In one of my lectures at Caxton Hall in London, England, on this trip of which I have been writing, I spoke about the amazing law of love. After the lecture, an actress chatted with me and confided that she had quit the stage as she was bored to death with the scurrilities of the modern plays. Now, she said, I see where I have been at fault. I have something to give. I have been demoting myself and have been deeply resentful toward the publishers who committed mayhem on my new book. I am going out tomorrow to prove that love casts out fear, hate, and resentment. I was in London just one week, and before I left, this actress phoned me at my hotel on Bond Street and said proudly and joyously, I signed a contract today. For two hours last night, I said aloud, Divine love fills my soul, and I fell off to sleep with a deep feeling of love and goodwill to all mankind. This actress had acquired a new idea of the meaning of love and had enthroned it in her mind and she discovered that divine love dissolves everything unlike itself. Love is the universal solvent. She had realized during the lecture that a base canard which was circulated about her and which particularly enraged her had no power to hurt her except through the medium of her own thought. She blessed those that had fabricated the absurd piece of gossip about her, and she was set free. Today I am rich. I spoke to a small group in a private home in Munich, Germany, on the law of mind. A young man, whose guest I was, is an outstanding alpine ski teacher. On one of his excursions in alpine climbing, one of his students, his fiancée, accidentally was lost in an avalanche and was found dead when discovered. He had been prosecuted by the law, and two courts found him guilty. At a third trial, however, he was exonerated from all culpability. He had nevertheless a deep sense of guilt and suffered from acute remorse. Further, he felt hurt by denunciatory comments in the local press. I explained to him that he could not be held responsible for the acts of others or for their willful disobedience of instructions on alpine climbing. I also added that some people have a death wish and a death complex, and they unconsciously choose some daredevil stunts which could result in their destruction. Self-loathing and self-hatred cause people to drink themselves to death, or to take an overdose of sleeping tablets or some other poison. He began to see that he was needlessly punishing himself, and that instead he should bless the girl and release her to God, thereby freeing himself and his former fiance. I pointed out to him that all of us on this earthly plane come to pass, and that it is impossible to have one's mother, father, sister, brother, or loved one all the time. The time comes when each makes his or her transition. This is a cosmic law, and it is universal, and applies to all men and women throughout the world.
We must therefore listen to the murmurings and whisperings of our heartstrings and realize that the passing on to the next dimension of each one of us is ordained by God and must be good or it would not be. It is also wrong to hold morbid or depressed thoughts about loved ones as this negative, depressed attitude holds them back. We must love them and release them to God knowing that their journey is ever onward, upward, and Godward. When we think of them, let us realize that God's love fills their souls. With this explanation, there was an effulgence of light in his eyes, and he exclaimed, A load has been lifted from my mind. I am free. Today, I am rich. She welcomed the idea. During a visit to the temple of Asclepios near Corinth, Greece, I listened with rapt attention as a guide explained how people in ancient times made pilgrimages to this ancient shrine and how they were healed of all manner of diseases. She dwelt on the fact that most of them were practically healed before they arrived because of their great expectancy, vivid imaginations, and blind belief. She added that ancient records reveal that the priests of the temple gave the sick ones drugs and put them into a deep hypnotic trance, and while in the trance state, the priest suggested to each one that the goddess would visit him or here, and a healing would follow. Archaeological research points out that undoubtedly many remarkable healings followed. In discussing her lecture on the techniques employed in ancient times, I found she was thoroughly conversant with the workings of the subconscious mind and said, Of course, Dr. Murphy, all the results which followed their sleeping at the shrine were due to the firm belief of those people that they would be cured of whatever infirmity they had, and according to their belief, it was done unto them. Their fervent belief activated the healing current of their subconscious mind, which they attributed to various goddesses as well as to Asclepios one of their ancient gods. The young woman guide possessed the riches of the mind. Her father was English and her mother Greek. She speaks both languages very well. She told me that she was born in one of the poorer neighborhoods of Athens, and that at times she could not go to school because her parents could not afford to buy her proper clothes. She prayed that God would give her the idea and tell her how to rise above the hypnosis of her condition which was stifling all hope and causing acute mental depression. The idea came to her spontaneously out of the blue to teach American children the Greek language. Accordingly, she approached the wife of an executive of an oil company and offered her services. The woman said, this is a wonderful idea. And straight away, she engaged her at a handsome salary. Subsequently, this woman took her to the United States and other countries on a vacation, with all expenses paid. Today, the young woman is independently wealthy, but she still loves to tell tourists the history of ancient Greece, of its imposing temples, medieval castles, picturesque islands, and of the holy sanctuaries of ancient times. She did not treat lightly the idea which came to her. Instead, she acted upon it at once and proved to herself that ideas are our masters and that they hold sway over our fortunes in life. Go all the way with your idea. Don't say, oh, that's too good to be true. Say rather, I welcome this idea. I accept it wholeheartedly, and it will come to pass in God's good time. Light dispels darkness. I had an interesting conversation with an abbot of one of the famous Greek monasteries. He said that he felt the most powerful statement in the Bible is, He that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. He added, The realization that in the depths of my being there dwells God in his wisdom and power gives me confidence and assurance. When I ask for light or understanding on how to solve my problem, a new insight or idea wells up within me, and I see through the problem as the light of God dispels the darkness in my mind. This abbot has discovered the secret of life and the source of the riches of life. He said to me in parting, reality is not just what we see objectively in this phenomenalistic world, but also what we think, feel, imagine, and believe. All he said, really, was what all students of the mind know, which is that infinite causation is within us and not outside of us. 
Remember, the creator is greater than his creation. The thinker is greater than his thoughts. The artist is greater than his art. Do not give power to sticks and stones or to external things. Give power, devotion, loyalty, and faith to the only creative power, which is in your thought and feeling. Your thought and feeling control your destiny. Your thought image felt as true is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Points to recall. 1. You are spiritually equipped to overcome and to triumph over all problems, hurdles, and difficulties in life. 2. Knowledge can pay you fabulous dividends. For example, knowledge of a foreign language can open up the way for wealth, travel, and exciting adventures along all lines. 3. Your vision or mental estimate of yourself activates your subconscious mind and compels you to be all that you imagine yourself to be. The law of your subconscious is compulsion. 4. Knowledge opens up closed doors. When man says, there is no way, the infinite wisdom within you says, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Revelation 3.8 Trust this inner guide and wonders will happen as you pray. 5. Get a bright new estimate of yourself. Your new concept will gain you new contacts, promotion, and untold wealth. 6. You are not responsible for the actions of another. All you owe the other person is love and goodwill. This frees you and absolves you from all sense of guilt. 7. Welcome the new idea which comes into your mind in response to your prayer. Go all the way with your idea. Come to a definite conclusion and prove to yourself that your new idea can bring riches into your life. 8. When stymied, blocked, or in a mental dilemma, get a new awareness, which means new light or understanding. Know that he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. Believe this, and a new insight will be given you, enabling you to see through all problems. Remember that light, understanding, fresh insight, truth, a new idea, dispels all darkness. Let the infinite light shine in you and all shadows of financial lack will flee away from you.